One Circuit Mailbag, coming to you live from downtown Tasmania. One Circuit, confusing people successfully for three years in four different languages. Another local one, another box, full of air. I think that must have a standard box. It's pretty strange. Um, but anyway, let's just dig around in there and see what pops out. Something very light and some paperwork inside the box. Wow. Yeah. So I think this is along the lines of the Raspberry Pi Pico, but just the chip. Yes. Look at that. So five of the RP2040. So, it's a bit sad actually, this one. <laughs> I'll zoom in and I'll tell you the sad story. Yeah, tiny. This is gonna be fun if I ever get around to trying to solder that. I'm guessing that's probably going to be something like a, a hot bed or an oven or something like that. Maybe a hot air gun, certainly not soldering. I mean, if you look at it, you know, it's going to be, yeah, that's going to be pretty tricky. So the RP2040, weirdly, is pretty cheap and pretty plentiful. Uh, I think around about $1.50 Australian from my recollection. But the specs on this guy are pretty impressive. And, you know, it's weirder still to think that currently this chip, not only is available, but he's cheaper than something like the A-Tiny 13, and the comparison between those two uh, would be pretty embarrassing for the A-Tiny 13, but it's all supply and demand, so um, I don't know why, but there is a lot of these chips around. And I was inspired by seeing online something called, I think it's called the Tiny Pico, and it looked really cool. And it looked, when I first saw it, like... For instance, the uh, Gerber files might be available and I might be able to make the same board or perhaps a variation of it. Turns out that's not true. It's a commercial project and they sell it commercially and it looks beautiful. In the meantime, I've ordered all the bits and pieces that I could see on the board as per the listing on the website. And that's not good because now I'm left with no PCB to actually solder them up to. So I'm still looking. Um, I know that, for instance, um, David Johnson Davies on his site, Technoblogy, has made a, a sort of a, um, I think he calls it like a limited version or a minimal version or something like that of uh, a board which uses the RP2040. Unfortunately, uh, David has a predilection for using very, very small components, and I'm pretty sure they are 0402s that he's got on his board, whereas I'd be looking at at least probably um, 0805s or preferably um, 1206s in order to uh, be able to solder it. So I'm now looking to maybe find, <clears throat> yeah, something like, oh, there goes my voice, I'll come back. Sorry about that interruption, the spicy cough has left a trace. Uh, but yes, yeah, so I'm now looking to maybe find another board. So if anyone out there has any um, indication of a PCB that I can solder this up to, something fairly simple, I'm pretty sure I've got most of the other components I need. But uh, yeah, looking for projects that I can uh, make using this chip. Uh, and even I'll take one where everything is provided and I just solder this thing on. I just want the challenge of putting one of these on and having it work. I think that'd be pretty cool. Nice chip, pretty cheap, and uh, the challenge for me will be finding a PCB to attach it to and then finding a project that, uh, that merits its arrival down here in Tassie. I've got so many dog pots, like I'm almost afraid to open them. Is it more dog nonsense or electronic nonsense? It's electronic nonsense. Hip hip hooray. So we've got three things. Uh, we've got thermal resistors, NTC MF58, 3950, 5K ohm. So presumably uh, we can hook that up and test those. So let's do that. 
Uh, we've also got TLCO72C. I don't know what that is. It might be. Hmm. It might. No, I really don't know what it is. It might be temperature sensors, actually, because I know that I've got some coming in, but I'm just not sure. It looks like 8-pin SOP. And these look like infrared LEDs, maybe? So 5mm TSAL6100. Let's open them all up separately and, uh, and see what they are. So this high-powered LED, and I'll, I'll put the specs up here, it has a uh, current uh, capacity of around, forward current, if you like, of around 100 milliamp. Uh, the little tester here does 30, which is probably not enough. I'll just put the phone in here, or the phone camera, to see if we can pick anything up. And yeah, I'm just picking up a little bit through that. Uh, let's give it some more juice and see if we can't get it to... Um, to maybe have a little bit more uh, discernible light coming out of it. And by discernible, I mean you can pick it up via the phone, which is always good for things like picking out whether a remote uh, is working and so forth. So let's give it some more juice and see how we go. Wow, the, uh, the circuit looks like one of those weird lopsided <laughs> dolls uh, with a funny eyes. But anyway, uh, <laughs> that's just a button. And we've got, I think, 5 volts coming in and current limited at around 90 milliamps. So uh, let's bring in the observer and we'll push the button. Yeah, so there you go. Uh, does the iPad pick up that? No, look at that. So it's just the camera on the phone. Isn't it interesting? Uh, iPad not picking up anything. Phone, just a faint glow, but I'm sure if you're um, picking up infrared, uh, then it would be uh, quite bright. Uh, not sure how far I can push those, but the idea is that uh, infrared cameras should be able to see that. So that's the next thing, have a bit of a play with infrared cameras using these LEDs as a, a light source. The little thermal resistor, NTCMF58, the 3950B5K ohm, and uh, it says 5%. And at the moment, I've got it hooked up. It's 13 degrees Celsius down here in the garage, and it says 7.7 .7 kilo ohms. And if I just warm it up a little bit, then you can see that dropping. Uh, so I'm guessing that, assuming I'm not dead, my fingers would be around the 30 to 34 degree mark. Um, so that's picking that up pretty well. And if I give it a bit more juice, Then it drops to practically nothing. How low can you go? Pretty low. So yeah, they seem to work uh, pretty well. And uh, now I'm going to be racking my brains to think of, uh, of ways of using them. Simply as a thermometer, I guess. I'm not sure what the characteristics are. I'll see if I can find a picture to put up here, which hopefully is linear between temperature and the uh, resistance, uh, and then that would be pretty easy to program up, so you can use them as a, uh, a quick and dirty thermometer, so you won't have to provide them with an awful lot of juice to figure out what the temperature is, that would be nice. And what a silly sausage am I, so I thought that the TL072 might be some sort of temperature device, it isn't, it's just an op-amp, it's a JFET uh, op-amp, and uh, I'll just put uh, some stats up here for you. But um, yeah, always keen to have some op-amps to play with. And I think this came from a recommendation. I often see uh, videos on YouTube which say something like, you know, these are parts that you must have. So it might have been Dave Jones with his Jelly Bean series. It might have been uh, someone like uh, Great Scott, who sometimes does, you know, you, you need to have this in your, in your kit. Um, it could have been Def Pom. Uh, does things like that as well. You know, this is a, a common op-amp that you need to have. Uh, so I'm not sure, so I can't ascribe it to any one particular influence, but um, that's probably where it would have come from. I'm pretty sure that someone, I would have been looking online and someone said, oh yeah, you really need some of these, they're great. And I would have said, yeah, yes I do. And I would have um, hit the 
um, the buy button without even thinking twice. So, uh, and now the thinking starts, uh, how can I use them? But um, yeah, that's what, they, that's what they are. And uh, let's hope we see them again soon. It's a long package containing more package containing more package and humidity sensors so I was uh, watching a guy who was automating his garden and uh, he was spruiking the joys of these guys so uh, presumably you plug that into there uh, and what have we got it looks like uh, we've got VCC ground and I can't read the other bit. I'm going to get a little bit closer and have a look and see. I presume it's, it looks like digital out and analog out, I would say, is pretty likely to be that. Some sort of sensitivity adjustment here. Um, I'm not sure what the, the actual IC is. Let's have a look at that. It says... Um, can I see that? I can't quite make that out. It looks like... I'm not even sure that's upside down. Oh, my eyes. Um, so I'm reading... It looks like a G911S and 393. Oh, 393. Okay, so... Um, comparator, um, which makes sense, and um, comparator or op amp, yeah, not really sure, but uh, yeah, a pretty typical configuration there for analog uh, amplification anyway. Um, yeah, so I'm not sure how long these would last in soil. Um, I think after I actually pushed the buy button and I had a little bit more look at into them, I think you're really only talking about. Uh, probably six months or so, which is not great. Uh, there are other types of sensors which last longer. I think that's a capacitance sensor. And um, these ones, uh, yeah, they uh, rely a little bit more on uh, conductance and uh, and so and, and being metal coarse and being in a pretty harsh environment uh, for electronic equipment, which is the garden, wouldn't really expect more than a season out of them really. But more about experimentation, I guess, and ultimate uh, control and uh, measuring in the garden. But uh, yeah, pretty interesting little units, so we'll have a bit of a play with them at some stage as well. Right, let's try not to cut anything when we cut things. The irony. Aha, zip sockets. Right, ah, uh, yes, I do remember this project. This is, uh, this is lovely. So I, I did see via Twitter uh, PCB way. Where's my pen? Where's my pen? Although this <laughs> this isn't sponsored, so I don't know what I'm doing here. But anyway, um, they did, as they often do, they tweeted about a nice little project where you can. Uh, there's a shield for an Arduino, and uh, I will try and find it and put the um, some of the details up here. But the idea is that instead of just programming in one chip at a time and I think they were showcasing an A-Tiny 85 but of course it could be the A-Tiny 13 but instead of doing one at a time you can actually put in three chips on the shield um, so I've ordered the shield and that was from PCBWay although I'm um, I'm actually paying for it it's not sponsored or anything like that um, but uh, it looked like a lovely shield I'll plug it into the Arduino and program up three uh, probably A-Tiny 13s which are which are my favorites but that's what these guys are about I think um, five of them because I've got five of the PCBs uh, on the way. Yeah, so that'll be an interesting project. Suitably charred and containing chippies. Nice. And the chippies are, well, it's going to be easier to take them out where it's not flaring so much, isn't it? So let's get one out. I'm uh, probably supposed to have some sort of strap around my wrist, but, you know, <laughs> amateur. Uh, so we've got CD40106. 
And the reason I've got these is because I did a project recently, relatively recently anyway, with uh, one of these chips. It is from memory a Hex Schmidt trigger inverter. And I think the project was to do with rail crossing. So I'll link that one up there. It was a bit of a fun project actually, I enjoyed that one. But the frustrating part, which I didn't quite cover in that uh, video, but I did in blog that, um, and you should you should always click on the blog uh, if it's um, if you want the more interesting information. But in the blog, I actually fessed up to the fact that the uh, I'd had two deliveries of these things. I think like ten chips or something like that, and one of them that I've been using uh, wasn't working with this um, train crossing. Uh, circuit and the problem was that uh, this thing was going closed circuit and uh, frying itself um, you know every single time and I kept assuming that the chip was fine um, but the circuit was bad and in fact it turned out that the the chip was bad and the circuit was fine so yeah a couple of happy wasted hours and lesson learned but um, this is a new pile of them uh, there's no other way of testing them apart from throwing them into that circuit uh, which, uh, of course, I've subsequently destroyed. But let's hope that next time I have need for a, uh, a Hex Schmidt Trigger inverter, this one is the legit one, or at least close enough to uh, legitimate that I need as a um, very amateur hobbyist. Quite unusually, this one builds itself as aluminium capacitor. Surely I'm not still ordering aluminium capacitors. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. I'm ordering giant capacitors. Oh, I keep forgetting about this. The many incarnations and the stupidity of this project of replacing nickel metal hydride uh, batteries with super capacitors. And this one here um, is 15 farads. I, at this stage, I'm pretty much sure that 15 farads isn't going to be enough. But of course, you can hook them up. Uh, in parallel to increase the capacity. So two of these would be 30 hooked up in parallel. Just to make sure they work though, um, I'm going to hook this up in a circuit and see if we can't charge them up and then discharge them. Just charging the super cap up at the moment. So it's just approaching 2.2 volts and we can see the little orange LED starting to light up and the current is still around the 600 milliamp mark, so it hasn't dropped much at this stage, but uh, but should stop uh, should start dropping soon. And of course, if we pull this guy out, there we go. So it's happily being uh, discharging uh, the uh, the 15 farads down through that um, that LED, and that should take quite some time to uh, discharge. Uh, so yeah, I think that's a, a pretty good get, seem to be legit. How useful they'll be in the context of the project that I'm working on, I'm not sure. Um, I'm still, I've still got some things to iron out, but I'm not confident at this stage that the old super cap capacitor uh, replacing the nickel metal hydride is really a go of what I want, which is a low powered overnight candle which is charged with solar power through the um the old qx5252 so yeah um chasing a holy grail but we'll see how it goes but at least the super cap seem to be legit which is a good thing that is the mailbag for the week and uh, we'll catch you next time see ya